Hello everyone and a massive welcome or welcome back to Fallout Play Build Collect. Today I just wanted to show you a small camp I've built in Fallout 76. 76 is a game that I had abandoned a couple of times in the past, but I have to thank some of the viewers of the channel. It was you guys who encouraged me to get back into the game, and I must say I'm glad I really did. Once I took your tips and advice on board, you was right, this game's a lot of fun if you give it a chance. And there really is a certain way you can play this game and have a lot of fun with it. So I wanted to mention where this is on the map. For those of you who don't know, the way the map works in this game is you have four points on the map, which are the main settlements. This one down here is for the Settlers faction. Then up in the north here we have the Raiders faction at Crater. And then we have where you start, that's here at Vault 76. And then down here in this zone we have the Rusty Pit. Now these four zones you can travel to for free. You can fast travel to them without it costing you anything. And it's really important that you get these unlocked early so it means you can move around the map a lot easier. And this, as you can see here, this camp I've set up, is roughly equidistant in the centre of the four points. Now you can fast travel to any of these points, including your camp, so it means you can pretty much get around the map for free without it costing you anything. And you can see this camp is very close to a train station and they're very useful in this game. So once again, massive thank you to everybody out there who's been helping me along with this game. And if anyone's new to the game and they'd like some tips, let me know and I'll put them together in a video for everyone. So this is my camp, it's pretty small and simple and you can throw something like this together pretty early on in the game. And because there aren't any real settlements to build in this game, you could keep a simple camp like this for the entire game. And to be honest, much like Fallout 4, it's quite possible to enjoy the game, play the game, complete the game without building anything substantial. So you can see here I've built this camp on a bridge and that helps funnel in any enemies that attack it. And at this end I've placed down these simple guard posts and these concrete barriers. It's a crude solution, but it's perfectly adequate. And you can see on this side I've left the gap so I can get down to the river, but more on that in a second. And you can see in the centre here I have these two survival tents. One for my character, and one for whatever companion I have active at the time. For those of you that don't know, you can have companions in this game, they provide some bonuses and they send you on some missions, but you can only have one active at a time. So this is my character's tent, you can see he has his musical instrument, a chair, a bed, his stash boxes, and this tinkerer's workbench. You'll need one of those musical instruments, they're important. Another area this game differs, most of the building items you need to gain a plan for. You can either collect them out in the world or gather them for vendors and such. It can be a bit of a pain, but narratively it does make sense. You can see here I have these destroyed robots in the camp. This settlement does get attacked all the time by low level enemies. It's never a problem, the turrets take them down and it's basically just free resources. There's also some containers up here that contain some free resources as well, up in the section of the bridge that was already barricaded. These are all relatively minor, but they are a nice little bonus when you're very early in the game. As we pass the commander here, I should note you can put different outfits on the companions. Here I've got her in a brotherhood uniform to match my character. Here's another travel caravan I unlocked, and I thought it worked well down here as a small portable workshop and lab. You can see it's quite a nice bright open space, and it was the ideal place to put the rest of my workbenches. It's one of the slightly odd things when building in this game to remember that you don't have any settlers to cater for. Nothing changes as far as the utility of having water purifiers, but it should be said it's not as easy to produce large quantities of water as it is in Fallout 4. In fact, it's probably worth noting if you're new to this type of game that the economy works in a completely different way to Fallout 4. And I guess that's true in most MMO style games. Not that this game is really a true MMO, but that's not why you're called. So we'll get into that at another time. I have a nice little secret surprise under this bridge. We'll get back to that in a second. First, let's take note of this massive graphical glitch. And as you can see here, even though I'm now running this on Xbox Series X, this game still has major technical issues. Still nothing like the major problems we had that made the game virtually unplayable at release. You can see I have some crops here on the far side, and with no settlers in the game, they just mysteriously grow on their own. Now your character does need to eat in this game, so it's useful to have a few around in an emergency. You can see here I've set up another tent with a shop and some storage area for other human players. But like most MMO style games, I find the resource management, item management and economic side of this game to be a real pain to deal with. My advice to new people would be don't worry about it too much, just keep what you really need, get rid of everything else. This back section of the camp, you can see I've added some extra power generators and a large water purifier. 
And let's head under the bridge and see a nice little secret. Now, if you played this game in the early days and left it, you might not even know this even exists. But they have now added a system where each player can essentially have their own vault. Mine is entered through this hatch and I've hidden mine here under the water. Now, once again, it must be said you've got no settlers, so this is just purely living space for your character. I only have the very basic starter package here and I've done very little to it, as you can see. And Bethesda have basically used this as a way to sell vault items to people in the store. And to be fair, there are some cool ones available. There's things like missile silos and all sorts of things. They are cool, but the prices are insane in my opinion. The whole camp system really plays into people who like the zany cosmetic items. And as I like practical, lore-friendly and thematic builds, most of what's available just isn't of interest to me anyway. Some players do build some really wild and fantastically elaborate camps. But really all I want is something very simple that serves the character's needs and looks like it could really exist within the game. Overall I'm really pleased with this bridge camp, it's practical, it serves the character's purposes and I've ended up keeping it for the whole playthrough. But as always I'd love to hear what you guys think, let me know what you thought of this and let me know what you think about the building system in the game in general. Just before you go I have to say a massive thank you to everybody who supports the channel whether over on Buy Me A Coffee or Patreon. I can't do this without you guys and your support is enormously appreciated. And you can now directly support the channel here on YouTube with Superfans. And of course you can always support the channel for free just by hitting the like and subscribe button. And as always, take care of yourselves and each other. And I hope to see you in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.